3D Mario game, but some kind of unique companion that makes them interesting in the brother. Sunshine has Flood, Galaxy has Luma, 64 has uh, the, 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 the Cloud Guy, and Super Mario Odyssey has Cappy. For all these games, these companions are pretty much required, and Odyssey is no exception. The core ability that Cappy introduced into the Mario series was capturing stuff, where Mario throws Cappy and transforms into whatever special thing it is. This ability is used all over the game, and it's pretty obvious you need to address, right? Well, that's actually not the case. There's a speedrun for Super Mario Odyssey called Minimum Captures. The goal of the run is to beat the game with as little captures as possible. And the speedrunners who do this category are very, very close to making this capture mechanic completely obsolete. Today, I'm going to show you how they've done it. The insanity that is Minimum Captures. This story starts just one month after Super Mario Odyssey was released. At the time, the game was able to be completed with just 16 captures. Here's what the run looked like. A wire capture to leave Cap Kingdom, a chain chomp to get the first moon, three gold chain chomp captures to leave the Emperor, a Sherm to beat the Mecha Wiggler boss, a wire to reach the Dragon Boss, five wires to progress to Bowser's Kingdom, a Pokeo capture to climb a wall, another wire to reach the Mecha Brule, then Bowser and Moon King, and a final wire to beat the game. To get the amount of captures this low already, speedrunners had found a ton of capture skips. In Cap Kingdom, they skipped the frog capture, which was supposed to be the capture tutorial, with a tight jump right at the start. In Cascade, they could skip the 2D section, and by extension, the large chain chomp, the tricky jump from the ribs of the fossil. In Metro Kingdom, they skipped a wire with a big jump to the city. In Mecha Brule fight, there was a really tough strategy to climb up it to Tokyo, and finally there was a trick to completely skip the Mooncake Gauntlet in Moon Kingdom. So that was it, 16 captures, and at the time, it seemed like that was the true minimum, but as the game aged, people started making memories. The first capture to be skipped, and 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 then, at the end of November in 2017, just a month after the game came out, 000AJ discovered a glitch using a nut. It turns out, if one of these nuts gets wet by being thrown in some water, Mario can throw the nut and dive into it, bounce, and grab it at the same time. This wet nut jump can be repeated indefinitely, giving Mario infinite height. The problem with it is just it's hard, like, really, really hard. The jump has a two-frame window be done successfully, that's like one thirtieth of a second. If someone could chain enough of these two-frame jumps in a row, they could theoretically skip the capture, the last wire in Bowser's Kingdom, as there's water and a nut right before the capture. But it was so difficult, no one was even willing to try. Like, if you messed up at all, Mario would die and they'd have to restart the jump all over again. Now, if you know anything about speedrunning, you'll know that speedrunners really like to push the limits. If something is theoretically possible in a game, with enough time, someone will inevitably start grinding it out in order to be the first to do it. And in this case, with a nut jump, Grady was the first. On October 16th, 2018, almost a year after the glitch was discovered, and after six months of practicing the nut jump, Grady committed to doing a run. He reached the nut in Bowser's Kingdom in just over an hour, got it wet, and began to nut jump. On his very first attempt, he nearly made it, but missed an input right at the end. He kept trying until an hour and 40 minutes later, when, after 50 consecutive nut jumps, Grady became the first person to ever successfully skip the last wire in Bowser's Kingdom. He finished the run, and the minimum amount of captures was down to 13 for a while. In the following months, a few other runners managed to pull up the nut jump and hold the speedrun world record for the category. Here's some fire, Tiffany, and myself, actually. There were a few theories as to how another capture might be skipped. And the most promising one involves skipping damn brutal body and her three little chaps. You need to collect five moons. And at first glance, it seems like getting that amount of moons before the boss played is impossible, because most of the kingdom is essentially locked before the boss is defeated. But sub areas don't exist, and extra moons aren't available. The only moons present in the kingdom before the damn brutal fight is first moons, which we determined can be collected without a capture. Chomp through the rocks, which required the chain chomp to open. Behind the waterfall in the 2D area, which again required the chain chomp, and treasure of the waterfall basin, which is in a cave locked off until the boss fight is completed. As it turns out, these four moons are actually possible to collect without capturing a single thing. A clip was found that allows Mario to slide through the rocks here to collect this moon. A faster clip was found for getting out of bounds near the first moon, and this can be used to collect both the first moon and the chest in the cave. The 2D waterfall moon is a bit trickier. By going out of bounds, it's possible to jump along some invisible platforms and just barely sneak into the 2D fight without the rocks. And after all that, you have four moons, one short of being enough to leave. The theory was that if one more could be collected, the game might let you deposit them in the Odyssey and leave the kingdom early without fighting the boss. The thing is, there was one more moon in the kingdom that existed, the moon on the island in the sky. To collect this moon normally, the game expected you to get on the island through a painting from a later kingdom in the game. If there was some way to reach that moon early, then that would be enough. For a long time, that moon sat agonizingly just out of reach. There was no nut in the kingdom to nut jump with, and there was no glitch that could teleport Mario upwards. And in fact, to this day, there's no glitch that can teleport Mario directly up to that island. So if there's no glitch to get up there, then why am I telling you about this then? Well, it's because someone figured out a way to get Mario onto the island without using which is something you might not know, is that Super Mario Odyssey has a two-player mode. With two-player mode, it's possible to move Mario and Cappy independently of each other, using two separate controllers, in addition to a few other movement options. In speedrunning, this mode isn't used very often, despite actually being faster than one player, because it's so difficult to find two players in the same location that are willing to grind out runs on a regular basis. This didn't stop some speedrunners, though. And this is where minimum capture starts to get crazy. Some speedrunners, such as 04 through 3, learned how to play Odyssey using two controllers, with his hands and feet simultaneously. Using his hands and feet, he was able to triple jump off of the big fossil, cap jump, throw Cappy upwards, then dive with Mario. Then, as Mario was falling, he aimed Mario to the platform below, and moved Cappy, which was off screen, blindly, to the island in the sky. He managed to get Cappy stuck on the island, with Mario down below. Uh, getting Cappy on the island doesn't really seem to achieve anything at first, because Mario himself needs to collect the moon, but what you might have noticed was that there's a checkpoint up there. By putting Cappy onto the checkpoint, and switching to one player mode to look up at the island, it was possible to activate the checkpoint, to warp up to it early, and collect the final moon needed to escape Cascade Kingdom without a capture. Before you proved the jump was possible, but wasn't able to complete the nut jump. And that's where I came in. I held a 13 captures world record at the time, and I wanted to be the first to do a 10 captures run. So that day, I got my feet all warmed up and started learning how to play with my feet. And it took a while, but after nearly six hours of attempts, I pulled it off and went on to complete the first ever 10 captures run of the game. And from this point on, minimum captures was done with two contro
object, then slightly out of bounds. If there was a way to get them from below, then it would be theoretically possible to get the Pokeo. There's a huge jump on the bottom for each any of the circles. But it's this seems fairly possible. The one to prove it was possible, named Made for Mario. Using some insane trick jump strat, he was able to jump off of an invisible wall, land half out of bounds circle, jump up to the outer ring of the circle, then jump back in bounds to a platform around the corner. From here, it was already proven that Mario could get the rest of the way up. Just jump back and use two-player mode to hit the checkpoint. Yet again, the race was on to be the first to complete a full run with the new trick. Marvel and I went for it. Marvel could pull off Pokeo easily, but he wasn't as comfortable with the nut jump. So I learned the skip and managed to complete the first ever nine captures run of Super Mario Odyssey. With nine captures remaining, the community had exhausted all of the theories for capture skips. It was only Wires and Cap and Ruin, the Sherman Night Metro, Wires and Bowser's Kingdom, and Bowser at the end. All of these seemed 100% impossible to skip. There's just no conceivable way to even get close to skipping them. So nine captures is where it stayed for two weeks until the most absurd trick yet was discovered. Literal teleportation. It turns out, two-player mode was far more broken than everyone initially thought. Circle, an avid glitch hunter was messing around with the two-player mode glitch, where Cappy would teleport to the Odyssey after warping to a checkpoint sometimes. After some more experimentation, he started to get Cappy to teleport to seemingly random locations. But over a few days of rigorous testing by the community, they figured out how to teleport Cappy nearly anywhere. They called the trick the Cappy Return Cancel, or CRC for short. A CRC has two parts. The first part is just initiating the Cappy work. When Cappy is far away, if you press a button to return Cappy to Mario, he starts to fly back to Mario for three seconds. If Cappy hasn't reached Mario yet after those three seconds, Cappy simply teleports onto Mario's head. But if the button is pressed again on the exact frame that it would teleport on Mario, it goes somewhere completely different. Where it teleports to is a little complicated, but I'll give you the simplified version. Here's Mario and here's Cappy. Now, when Cappy moves around, it creates a sort of imaginary sphere between the two that changes in size depending on how far apart they are. When the warp is triggered, Cappy goes to wherever Mario's line of sight happens to intersect the sphere. Like this. Now, I did say this was a sphere. Like Dimensional shape. So it's a little more complicated than that, but anyways, by chaining multiple CRCs together, it's possible to manipulate Cappy to teleport nearly anywhere. So, with an understanding of the CRC, it was time to put it to work. What capture was going to be skipped next using this new glitch? Uh, almost all of them actually. The first one was very unexpected. When you fly into Metro Kingdom for the first time, it's Night Metro, and the Mecha Wiggler is terrorizing the city. And there's like three moons you can select before fighting it, so not even close to the 20 required to leave. But that's only when you fly into the kingdom for the first time. If you enter for the first time through a painting and haven't officially unlocked the kingdom yet, it's actually still day. And the Mecha Wiggler is nowhere to be seen. Of course, by entering through the painting from Sand Kingdom, you're on this tiny little island, but that doesn't because Cappy can teleport now. Bye. By ground pounding with Cappy for a few minutes, the amount appear large enough to reach the mainland. Then doing one CRC to raise up Cappy a bit, moving Mario to another position and doing another CRC. It's possible to have Cappy teleport directly onto a checkpoint in the city, allowing Mario to reach Metro Kingdom before you've even completed sand. There's enough moons to collect the 20 required to leave, but because you're in the kingdom early, the Odyssey hasn't arrived yet. So the run has to backtrack to the earlier kingdoms in order to properly unlock Metro. Once you reach Metro the intended way, it's just a matter of immediately tossing the moons into the Odyssey and leaving the kingdom in chaos. Skipping the Mecha Wiggler boss and the Sherm capture window, leaving eight captures. That wasn't the only capture skip though. Over the next two days, CRC setups were found to skip all five remaining wire captures in Bowser's kingdom. Because every wire had a check right next to it, just find the right angles to stand on and how far down to ground pound Cappy. And you can teleport Cappy to every checkpoint in the kingdom. Unfortunately, there isn't a checkpoint after the nut jump wire, so nut jumping was still required. With all the bounds, it was a mech ramble to be the first to complete a three captures run. I started a run, and the previous 80% world record holder, Nitro Vito, started attempts with the help of his friend Travis Percent as well. It was a race to see who could finish first. Something we didn't realize though was how stupidly hard these CRCs were. For the first CRC, I spent over two hours attempting it, only to miss the checkpoint ever so slightly, accidentally capturing the binoculars, and having to restart the run. Something I should reiterate about CRCs is that they are frame perfect tricks. You have one sixtieth of a second to press a button, and there's no visual or audio cue to signify when that frame is. Essentially, you'd press a button, wait exactly three seconds, and press that button again. For the first runs, speedrunners use a metronome to help time these, but it was still so brutally precise. The second attempt, I got back to the little metro island, and after only eight minutes of attempts, got it. The run wasn't over yet. There were four more CRCs in Bowser's Kingdom. It took 43 minutes to get the first CRC, 32 minutes of attempts to get the second, nine minutes to get the third, and one hour 40 minutes to get the last. Then it was just the Pokeo skip and nut jump to finish off the run. Three captures, the new minimum. The first run was just under five hours, but over the following months, the minimum captures community improved a bunch of the tricks. They figured out how to make CRCs no longer frame perfect, still brutally hard, but much easier. They figured out the CRC to hit the island checkpoint in Cascade was faster than the two player jump. They figured out how to use the CRC to skip the Pokeo instead of that insane wall climb. After months of practice and the tricks becoming more and more consistent, the world record was passed around a few times. Myself, Ophir, and CJYA all held a record at some point, with the fastest time being currently held by CJYA in one hour, 21 minutes, three seconds. And there are only three captures left. These three captures being the Wire and Cap Kingdom, the Wire and Rune Kingdom, and Bowser on the Moon. No one's been able to skip these captures yet. There are a few crazy theories brewing though. Runners and glitch hunters alike are still finding cracks in the game to this day. There's still lots of glitches to be discovered yet, and one day it may just reach zero. If you enjoyed this episode of Lowest Percent, consider subscribing to the channel. High quality speedrunning content. This is just for video on the channel. We've got so much more together. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.